Hi, MIH is here. This is our second video of the metal unit and the first for transition metals. Today we are making some dichromates by electrolysis. But wait. Warning! Hexavalent chromium is very dangerous. It is a known carcinogen to humans, type 1 in the WHO list of carcinogens. Eating it, touching it, or breathing it in may cause cancer. In addition to mosques and gloves, a reducing solution I show later is very necessary to reduce the hexavalent chromium to harmless trivalent. Now let's go into the main part of the reaction. So I wanted to make some high valent metal compounds such as chromates, permanganates, and ferrates. There are mainly three ways of doing this. Liquid phase oxidation, solid state melting, and electrolysis. Liquid phase oxidation includes oxidizing an alkaline solution of the metals in lower oxidation states. This produces many byproducts and the reaction isn't very efficient. The solid state melting process involves melting metal oxide with sodium hydroxide in air. It takes much energy to sustain and it is a very long process without using any other oxidizers like potassium chlorate. Therefore, the best method overall is the electrolysis method which is using the metals as the anode to electrolyze a solution. This directly oxidizes the metals to the highest oxidation state while yielding very pure products. I mean, I don't know if the process will work though, so I did some small scale tests. I opened up my bag of chromium metal chunks and took out one piece. Chromium is a hard, heavy, shiny, and silvery metal that does not corrode in air. I weighted the piece and it was a surprising 46 grams for such a small size. The density of chromium isn't especially high, but it is the hardest metal and has a Mohs hardness of 9. For the first test, I took some spare sulfuric acid that I got on hand from last time. I connected the anode to the piece of chromium and the cathode to foam nickel. Here the solution is already slightly colored since I switched on the power beforehand. As I switch on the power supply again, the cathode produces a lot of bubbles while the anode shows an orange-yellow color. The chromium is oxidized to chromic acid on the anode and dissolves into the solution. Now some of you may wonder if the chromate ions in the solution gets reduced to trivalent chromium or chromium metal when they move to the cathode. The answer is yes, reduction of chromium occurs in some degrees. But since the chromate ions have a negative charge, it tends to stick around the anode instead of the cathode, which makes it difficult to reduce on the cathode. Anyways, here is a footage about 30 minutes afterwards. The orange color deepened significantly, and I've placed a watch glass on top to prevent hexavalent chromium being released into the air with the acid mists. By the way, the experiment should be done under maximum safety protections. I already had a sodium thiosulfate solution on standby. And whenever something touches the hexavalent chromium, I dump the thing into the large beaker of thiosulfate. Here, I put some used pH test papers inside the thiosulfate solution. Also, I was wearing masks, goggles, and gloves at all times. As the last precaution, perform the experiment in a well-ventilated area if possible. Alright, my test is done and I was very satisfied with it. Now I decided to do something interesting with it. I take the electrolysis setup apart, put the electrodes into the thiosulfate, and pulled out my bottle of ammonia. I carefully added ammonia dropwise to the chromic acid solution and keep checking the pH until it reaches 3 to 4. Obviously, the pH papers were disposed in the thiosulfate. Here I am neutralizing the acid in the solution, which are chromic acid and sulfuric acid, with ammonia to produce the ammonium salts. I specifically wanted ammonium dichromate, which can decompose to chromium 3 oxide, a catalyst for nitric acid production. However, after the experiment, I did some calculations and found out that there are so much more ammonium sulfate than the dichromate, which means that, well, we can't get anything pure from it. But anyways, this is just a test, and it worked. I disposed the remaining solution in the thiosulfate bath. With the acid electrolyte successful, I thought if it was possible to do the same thing with bases. 
using bases would not lead in sulfate ions that are hard to get rid of, and thus improves purity by a lot. As expected, I did the exact same thing, and the process worked just as fine using sodium hydroxide. I was very, very delighted by this. Alright, great. Now I can try a quantitative systematic preparation of the dichromate. I measured out 20 grams of solid sodium hydroxide and dissolved it in a random amount of water, perhaps, well, 80 milliliters. I put the chromium lump and the foam nickel into it and put in a plastic spoon to prevent shortcuts. When the current is on, the anode produced a vivid yellow color, indicative of chromates. I left the cell on for some 2-3 to three hours and, well, it looked perfectly fine. Note that in alkaline conditions chromium exists as chromates, while in acidic conditions as dichromates and possibly chromic acid. Chromates are yellow, while dichromates are orange, so this time we're producing a yellow color instead of an orange one. And this is how it looks on the next day. I switched on the power as soon as I came back on the next weekend. The electrolysis did proceed, but the rate of bubble emission was quite slow. Now I found out why. The cell has a bunch of solid jelly-like material. This is probably the extra chromates and dichromates that dropped out of the solution. I added some water to the cell to help dissolve it back, and then proceeded as before. Our cell ran for another week, and I was ready to harvest our dichromates. I stopped the cell and took everything apart. The electrodes were soaked with dichromates and seems a bit corroded, but that is fine. The contents of the beaker are poured into another smaller beaker, and here you can clearly see the slurry at the bottom. I deposited the electrodes in the thiosulfate and checked the pH of the electrolyte. It was around 6, which was not perfectly ideal. The pH of pure sodium dichromate solution is around 3 or 4. A pH of 6 would indicate that there are still a lot of sodium chromate in the solution, but I can adjust that later and convert all of it into dichromate. For now, I decided to cut the video here since the whole project is too long to merge into one video. The remaining parts would be in a later video that would come quickly in a week or two. Anyways, it was quite evident that we made some hexavalent chromium compounds easily and efficiently by electrolysis. So if you can get your hands on chromium metal, which you can make easily by thermite, I strongly recommend you to try this. That's it for this video. Bye!